In this video, I'm going to show you this hand-drawn write-on text effect inside of Adobe Premiere Pro and Adobe Photoshop. We're going to start in Photoshop and transfer that into Premiere. So let's get into it. So we're beginning in Adobe Photoshop and before we go ahead and do anything, we first need to go ahead and make a new document. So you want to create a document with a width of 1920 by 1080. This is important because we want this to match our video size in Adobe Premiere. So remember 1920 by 1080. And of course you can rename this if you want. So let's just go for handwriting and we'll press OK. So as you can see, we've got our Photoshop document now open and we first just want to imagine our text. So I'm just gonna go ahead and create a new title. So I'll select the horizontal type tool and I'm just going to type out my last name, which is Brooker. Then I'll select Command A and we'll change the color to black. We'll increase the size of that to 200 maybe. There we go. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna change the font to something which is a bit more handwritten. So let's go for this. The whole point of this is just reference. So we're not exactly choosing a specific font. We're just using this as reference because we're gonna go over and draw everything by hand in a second. So select that font. We'll go to 40 on the size and then you just want to go into your properties and in character, you just want to add a little bit of spacing. So by default, it should be at zero, but if it's not, then set it to zero. And if that's not enough spacing still, then just increase that to a higher number like 100. But I think, I think zero works in this example. And then once you've done that, you just want to center this up in the center of the document and we'll just go over to the right, select opacity and pull this down to around Let's go 20% or maybe 16, somewhere around there. And then you just want to press the padlock icon to lock that layer. So this is just our reference. Now from here, we just need to go ahead and create a new layer. So we'll go layer, new, layer. If we go back, by the way, if we go layer, new, layer, you should see the keyboard shortcut for that. And that is command, shift and N. We're going to be creating quite a lot of new layers. So that might be the quickest way of doing it. So we'll go new layer. We'll press OK on this. Then we'll go into our paint brush or our brush tool. Select the brush tool and just scribble onto the canvas. So at the moment you can't really see anything and that's because the paint is white. So we're just going to make this black. Scribble again and that's kind of OK, but we're going to go into the brush styles. And as you can see, we've got all of these presets available to us here. So you've got general brushes, dry media brushes, wet media brushes, special effect brushes and so on. But I'm going to go into the dry brushes and I'm going to select one of these. So I'm going to go for the ultimate charcoal pencil. Let's see how that looks. That looks good, but it's not big enough at the moment. So I'm just going to increase that to around 100 maybe. There we go. I'm just going to scribble over here. And there you go. That kind of looks okay, but I might bring this down a bit. There you go. That's better. Now, the basic premise of this effect is to create a stop motion hand drawn effect. So essentially what we're going to do is make a small layer here and then we're going to create a new layer and we're just going to go over that, but carry on a bit further. And then the next layer, we're carrying a little bit more. Next layer, we're carrying a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, creating a new layer every time we add an adjustment. So I'll just get rid of all of that and I'm just going to focus on this bottom section here. So we'll draw a line here. Then we'll use that keyboard shortcut to create that new layer. So we'll go Command, Shift and N. That is created a new layer, as you can see over here. So from there, we're just going to carry that action up to there. Command, Shift and N. New layer. We'll carry that on around. Command, Shift N to create that new layer. And basically, you just want to keep going ahead, creating a new layer and adding all of these little adjustments on to your text. And there you go. Once you've gone over all of your letters and you've now got this, we can just go ahead and we're just going to disable that text layer there and we'll just get rid of that white background. And we can go ahead and export this as a Photoshop document. So we'll go File, Save As, and it should load up with, do you want to save it to your cloud document or on your computer? We're just going to save this on the computer for now. We'll just pop this on the desktop, call this handwriting.psd and make sure this is a Photoshop document. And then we'll press Save press OK on this. We'll jump into Adobe Premiere Pro, open up the project tab. Then we're just going to go into our finder. We're going to find that document. So handwriting.psd. We'll drop that into Premiere 
and that should load up this warning message here. So we'll just get rid of that. So it's going to say import layered file handwriting, import as merge all layers. We do not want to select merge all layers because it's just going to turn all of those individual layers into one image. Instead, what we want to do is go individual layers and press OK. And as you can see, that makes a folder and inside that folder are all of these individual layers. You won't see it up here because it's black paint on this black background. But if we create a new white color mat over here and drop these into that, you'll see that black paint. So we'll go into our project tab. We'll create a new color mat. So new item, color mat, press OK on this and we'll make this white. Press OK on that, press OK on that. And then we'll just drag that onto video layer one and extend the duration. Then we'll just lock this so that we don't affect this in any way. Now we'll go into our handwriting folder. Make sure that these are chronological. So make sure one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Make sure they're in that right order. Then we're just going to select all of those. So I did command and A to select all of those and drag them into our sequence. Now, as you can see, unfortunately, this is the effect that we're getting and it's not exactly the best effect. And unfortunately as well, all of these layers are around five seconds long each as well. Now from here, we want to stack all of our layers on top of each other, but delay them by maybe like one or two frames to create this right on effect. So layer one can stay where it is, but layer two can go up onto the next track and then go across by one frame. So as you can see, this is one, this is two, and there's a one frame delay. There you go. You're sort of seeing that stop motion effect in play there. So we're just going to do the same thing. So we're just going to go another frame over and we'll just drag that to the cursor. Another frame over, we'll just drag this to the cursor. And then again, you just want to keep repeating this process over and over again, making sure there is this one frame delay between all of your layers here. Now I'm 10 frames in and as you can see, this is how the effect is looking. And it's at this point where you can make a creative choice. Do you want this fast write on effect or would you rather this be more of a stop motion look? and have maybe two or three frames between each layer. So let's go for three, see how that looks. There you go, there's a three frame delay between each one. Let's see how that looks. There you go, that looks a bit more stop motion now. So we'll just keep doing this with that three frame gap. So one, two, three, and just keep carrying on. And there you go. As you can see, I've got 35 layers and they're all stacked on top of each other like this. So let's see how that looks on the monitor. Let's play this back. There you go. That is this really cool stop motion text effect. It looks really cool. Now I'm just going to expand this area. So I'm going to maximize the frame and then I'm just going to drag the duration of all of these clips over to the right. And at around the 15 second mark, I'm just going to go through and I'm just going to make a cut on all of these. There you go. So the keyboard shortcut for that cut, that razor tool is C. And then once you've done that cut, you can just press V to load up the normal selection tool, highlight the end of that and just delete that. So they all stagger on, but they all come off at the same time. And now from here, I'm just going to highlight all of those layers. We'll right click and we'll go nest and we'll call this text. Now we can close down the window so we can restore the frame size and we can play this back and that is how this looks. And now because all of this is in its own nested layer, we can go into the effect controls and scale this down and position this wherever we want this to be. And all of those layers are now going to be affected at the same time. I always recommend making this as large as possible in Photoshop because it means whether you want it small or you want it large, it's still going to be nice and crisp. If I was to make this really small in Photoshop and then I wanted to increase this in Premiere, unfortunately you'd start to see the edge of the pixels and it would just look a bit messy. So making it larger in Photoshop allows you more flexibility in Premiere. And there you go. That is this hand-drawn stop motion inspired text effect inside of Adobe Premiere Pro. Now this one is a little bit of a time consuming one, but you can get some really interesting and really creative results from this. Now, personally, if I was doing this effect, I typically wouldn't bother doing it on the computer because I feel like I can't create nice brush strokes using a mouse or a trackpad. I would rather do this on the iPad and use the Apple Pencil to actually physically draw this out. So if you have a tablet or a drawing pad for your computer, 
then I'd recommend doing it that way rather than trying to do this with your computer mouse. But of course, if you don't have a tablet with Photoshop or if you don't have a drawing pad or anything like that, then of course a computer mouse or a laptop trackpad is going to do the job completely fine. As you can see, this was done with the mouse and it definitely still works. And there you go. Thank you ever so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate your support and hopefully I will see you on the next video. See you there.